Uh, the moment I'm completing uh, a monograph on Neil Jordan, the Irish filmmaker and writer, which was based on my uh, DPhil thesis at, at Oxford. So that's uh, hopefully going to be out this year, and I'm just putting the finishing touches to that now. There's a collection of essays coming out on Flann O'Brien uh, in April called Contesting Legacies, which was uh, based on a conference a couple of years ago that I gave the keynote speech at. So I've got the lead essay in that, which is, uh, which is something I'm looking forward to. A recent book published in 2012 um, was on migration and cohesion in the United Kingdom, covering England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And it was really looking at what is the basis of cohesion in different parts of the country um, and the obverse, what might cause there not to be cohesion in different areas. And we found it was nothing to do with um, either impelled or uh, desired segregation or anything like that, that really it was often about the history of the local place, the history of migration into an area, and whether people came to think of themselves as um, uh, people like us. Are they a diverse group or are they pretty um, homogenous and a, a sort of just one ethnicity? And we found particularly, you know, the Irish were included in that. So, for example, in a place like Kilburn, which is quite a poor area of London, but has an immense history of immigration of various groups, we found that the Irish, as well as other groups, played their part in making it a welcoming area for immigrants. Well, one book that's forthcoming later this year, I hope, 2014, is a book with a colleague, Jim McPherson, on um, women and Irish diaspora identities. It's an edited book, and we've got many of the prom most prominent women scholars about Irish migration and diaspora writing about what has been the context for women Irish women establishing identities in various parts of diaspora, and also looking at second generation and third generations as well. Yes, well, I suppose the the book that's preoccupying me most at the mo moment is because it'll be quite a long-term project, is I really want to um, get even further than I am already into a book looking at the impact of Irish migration on Britain compared with the United States. So it's really looking at the different positioning of Irish immigrants, how they've been responded to, how they've made their lives in those two different societies. And for example, they've been um, very differently incorporated uh, in Britain, a relatively invisible migrant group, in America, a very prominent European immigrant group who are often cited as a quintessential European ethnic uh, community or group. And uh, so I think as they're the two biggest destinations since 1800 for Irish migrants, uh, with more going to the United States in the 19th century, more coming to Britain in the 20th century, I thought I'd like to write a book that compared the two. Well, I've published a number of papers on uh, the relationship between British Labour and uh, uh, Irish nationalism. Uh, for example, the uh, attitude of the British Labour Party towards the Government of Ireland Act, which set up Northern Ireland, which partitioned the country in 1920. Uh, the response of the British Labour Parliamentary Party and the Labour press, primarily the, the Daily Herald, to the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which established the independent Irish Free State in 1922. And most recently, um, looking at um, what the Irish government was saying in 1923 and 1924 uh, as regards the likelihood of this new and untested British Labour Party coming to power in Britain, in this country, and what their response, what their policies uh, would be likely to be as regards their Irish policy. Uh, in, in, in the future, um, my book, The British Labour Party and the Establishment of the Irish Free State, in that period, um, between 1918 and 1924, uh, I hope that that will be published in the very near future. The forthcoming book that I'm working on at the moment um, is a critical edition of a, a film memoir by Brian Desmond Hurst, a Belfast-born uh, filmmaker 
who left a memoir uh, in the British Film Institute uh, in the mid-1980s uh, when he died. And I'm working with uh, Alan Smith, uh, and uh, we're publishing uh, this memoir uh, surrounded by a set of critical essays um, with Lagan Press. And uh, we hope to launch that in September with a full weekend uh, retrospective of Brian Desmond Hurst's uh, 30 or so films uh, that he made during his career.